Have you ever wondered why instruments sound different even when they're producing the same note? Get ready to satisfy your curiosity. Before we try and understand musical instruments, we have to understand the thing they produce, sound. There are two basic types of waves, transverse and longitudinal. Transverse waves move the particles of their medium perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. For example, if you pull up and down on a string, you send a transverse wave through the string. As energy reaches a particle, it moves up. Once the energy passes, it moves back down to its original position. The opposite of a transverse wave is a longitudinal wave, which moves the particles of the medium in the same direction the wave is traveling. Take it back to your childhood and imagine a slinky. Or get a real one. When you push on one end, it causes a chain reaction of compression and expansion. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. These waves are produced when something vibrates, whether it be human vocal cords, a reed on a woodwind instrument, or the engine of a car. Vibrations spread throughout the medium they are in by creating compression and expansion. The initial pulse pushes the medium it is in into particles in front of it. After the energy passes, the medium expands back to its original position. So long as there is a medium to travel through, the wave will continue forward because the particles don't absorb the energy. They merely transfer it. So why does sound not continue forever? As the wave travels, it spreads out making it harder and harder for the human ear to detect. Usually, when a vibration in the air reaches our ears, it causes tiny hairs within our ears to vibrate as well. These vibrations are transmitted to the brain and interpreted as sound. However, if a wave has spread out immensely, it will no longer be concentrated enough to cause significant vibration in our ears. Side note, if there is no medium for sound to travel through, it will be impossible to hear. This is why sound cannot travel in a vacuum. If there's no medium for it to compress, it can't transfer energy. Irish scientist Robert Boyle proved this with his famous clock in a jar experiment. He placed an alarm clock while ringing inside a glass jar and then sealed the lid and vacuumed all air out of the container. As the air, the medium for transport, was taken away, the sound slowly dwindled away until it became inaudible. However, when the lid of the jar was removed, air rushed back into the jar and the clock immediately produced sound. Okay, so back to sound waves. How do we measure them? Two main factors, amplitude and frequency, tell us most everything. Amplitude, the distance from base to crest of the wave, tells us the intensity of the sound, how loud or soft it will be. Frequency tells us the speed of the sound. Sounds with lower frequency have a lower pitch, such as that produced by a tuba. Sounds with higher frequencies have a higher pitch, like sounds produced from a flute. But wait. If all sound waves with the same frequency have the same pitch, how can two different instruments play the same note, but have different sounds? A clarinet and a flute may both play a C, but they have distinctly different tones. These differences in tones are caused by differences in the layering and shape of the sound waves. Vibrations from an instrument produce multiple waves, the lowest of which is called the fundamental. This is the note we hear. However, there are multiple other waves produced at the same time, called overtones, which give the instruments different qualities of sound, even if the same pitch is produced. So essentially, there are multiple sound waves being produced and interpreted together, one to govern the pitch we hear, and the others to change the tone, or timbre, of the note. The actual overtones produced with each note are different for each instrument. On the violin, for example, a string vibrates to produce the fundamental tone. But the string also vibrates in half which translates to a note with twice the frequency as the fundamental. This higher note, one octave higher, is somehow concealed inside the lower pitch. But on the clarinet, the first overtone is 12 steps higher than the fundamental. These differences in spaces between the notes combine to form different shapes of sound waves. A basic sound wave is a sinusoidal wave, but with the addition of overtones, also called harmonics, there is a wide variety of wave shapes. A trumpet produces sawtooth waves, while a clarinet makes square waves. This results in varying timbre, even if the same pitch is played. Hopefully this has helped satisfy your curiosity about sound waves and instruments. I'll see you next time when Curiosity Calls.